The Small Business Show, episode 330 for Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021. Welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co. You know us here. This is the show where small business-ing is a verb because we like to take action. Sponsors for this episode include customcomet.com, where you get 5% off just for being a Small Business Show listener. We'll talk more about the details of that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I am Shannon Jean. I'm excited to be here, Dave. Three three zero. That's a good number. Three three zero is a good number. I'm, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I like, I like, <laughs> I like, you know, repeating numbers and patterns and things like that. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah we'll be good. at five hundred before you know it. That is true. That is yeah, true. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Good. Hey, uh, I have, I have some things I want to discuss today. But first, I, I, I have this quote that I heard recently that I really, I've been thinking about, really resonated with me, and I'd like to. Uh, share it with you and get your thoughts on it. Lay it on me. I have no idea what you're about to say, which I love. So go. Yeah, so I, I, if you know who Seth Godin is, uh, he wrote a, he's written a bunch of stuff. One, uh, one of my favorite books called The Purple Cow. Uh, he says, if you want to run an organization you're proud of, choose your ownership as carefully as you choose your employees. And I really, th- you know, I, I've had so many different kinds of partners Matter of fact, you and I were just talking about how you got involved in, in a business and we, came, you know, we we're like, well, this is why they asked you because of the value you bring. Right. Uh, and, and there's all kinds of d- different kinds of partners. There's financial partners that are maybe not involved in the business. And on the flip side, there's managing partners. And each of those people are going to impact your business in some way, you know, are you concerned maybe that you're this potential financial partner? Are they on the up and up? Are they honest? Uh, they have, they had any problems, right? You know, is, is your, is this potential managing partner a good leader or can they be kind of a jerk and they're going to have to work with your, your, <laughs> your, your employees? Yeah. You know, so, so these things, they really have massive implications with your business. And we talk about, you know, we've done shows on partners, uh, and, and we've done a lot about employees. Um, and I think that, you know, choosing, I think Seth is right. Choosing your partners and co-owners, could be, probably is, maybe more important than choosing your employees. Oh, yeah, because you are you can fire a bad employee. That's not yeah. to say that a bad employee is incapable of ruining your business. Like, that can also happen, for yes. sure. But extracting yourself from a relationship with a bad employee, as difficult as it feels, and really even as logistically or practically difficult as it might be, it is way easier than extracting yourself from a relationship with a partner oh, and, yeah. and sure. the, you know, that part, that dissolving a partnership relationship can very easily kill the business. Like, like there may be no way to dissolve it without the business simply dying. Yeah. Uh, and that's right. assuming the business even got to a point where it had value in the first place, which is what the partnership brings to the business is getting it to the point where you could hire that employee, right? Like, yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and I think that, you know, we talk about story and how you frame things and kind of build this culture of your business. And, and that's really important as well. Is this person, you know, uh, you're going to create this organization with that you hopefully will be proud of. How do they look at it? Are they yeah. solely money driven? You know, I've, I've always come at it from the backside that if you build something great and something that you can be proud of, like Seth says, uh, the money will follow. But if, you know, I've had folks that, you know, I've done some things with that where the money was just first and foremost, and it can be a distraction. Um, and so when we've talked about that, I think they, you know, you brought up in the past, you know, dealing with expectations. If, if someone, what are their requirements? You know, the, do they need to take a bunch of cash out of this business right, right away? Uh, or can they invest in the future? So, so I, I, I thought it was a really uh, applicable quote for us uh, small business owners. I, I like it. Yeah. We'll have a lot to say. We've had a lot to say about partnerships. We're, we're going to be putting up some stuff on the site where we really kind of distill that down for, for that topic and several others. But, um, but yeah, what a, what a great, what a great um, quote. 
I, I'm thinking about my class that I teach. The, the class feeds this show and this show feeds the class. Like it's definitely sure. true. Um, and I, and this semester I did one, I, I would start every class. I taught a class at, at the university of New Hampshire this year. For those of you that didn't catch that through episodes that we were doing this past semester, it was the business of podcasting. So I am not a teacher. They stood me up in front of this class because I'm not a teacher because I do a thing and they wanted me to teach about a thing, but really they wanted me to teach about what it's like being in business. So I found, well, I learned <laughs> through the semester that it was worthwhile for me to start each class with a mini lecture slash discussion that wasn't necessarily about podcasting, just about business. And I called it my day in the life of Dave lecture, right? Like what's happened hmm. either in this last week or something that's sort of, you know, has meta importance outside of any sort of temporal uh, events. And, um, and so I did a partnership thing where I, I told some stories. Actually, I told some stories that I, with some details that I probably wouldn't even share in this show uh, to my students just to, to show the importance of, uh, of exactly this. And I want to, I'm going to put this quote up on the, on the screen when, uh, when I teach that lesson the next time. <laughs> yeah, it works. Yeah. And Seth is great. He, he does a daily blog post it's real quick, yeah. but it's right to the point. Uh, Seth Godin, G O D I N.com. I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Yeah, no, I, yeah, that's great, man. Was that, was this from one of his recent blog posts? Is that where you got no, this? No, I don't know where I picked it up, but I actually yeah. put, I was looking at our Slack, uh, channels today uh digging for some info and i came across it again and i realized I'd, i i posted it there but i didn't talk about it on the show yeah. so i thought well, we should bring it up and discuss it today yeah well there's a there's value there too right like like here's a little action item that you can take for your business not just today but every day when an idea comes to mind capture it somewhere even yeah. an idea like this that i'm sure in the moment you thought this is the best thing. I'm going to remember this forever. And it may be true in the right circumstances. This may come to mind for you, right? Certainly now that we've yeah. talked about it, there's a greater chance of that. But even before it may have come to mind, if like we started talking about partnerships, you'd be like, oh, there's this great quote. But when I ask, hey, what do you want to talk about on the show today? You, this might not come to mind, but, but the fact that you captured it in a place where you can then go mine for your own ideas it did come up and that's a hugely valuable thing. Not just because something's a great idea. doesn't mean you'll remember it. Um, and so, Oh yeah. You won't remember it. You won't. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. 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 That's great. Um, I had a, I had an interesting scenario this week and it really wasn't about business, but the lesson uh, from it definitely applies. And I've, I've used it many times. So I'll share is a little bit of a geeky scenario. I had my first band rehearsal here at, uh, at the house, uh, you know, in the studio since pre, you know, pandemic times. Right. Okay. And the guys all get here and they, you know, they start like, you know, getting their stuff set up and turning on their iPads. Cause we have our charts all stored in like a Dropbox or whatever. So everybody kind of can work from the same thing. And as everybody's starting to get going, maybe about 10, 15 minutes in, one of them's like, what's your Wi-Fi password, Dave, or which Wi-Fi network to use? And I told them and they're like, yeah, it says no internet. I'm like, what do you mean no internet? And I, hmm. I, I check on my phone. I check on my computer and it's like the internet's blazing fast. I'm like, dude, I don't know. Like, whatever. And we tried to look at it, but then it was like, all right, well, we're not going to spend hours on tech support. Just we'll fig we figured out another path for them. And it was like, great. I think he tethered to his cell phone. And then another guy said, okay. oh, yeah, I'm seeing the same thing. And I was like, well, whatever. He's like, don't worry about it. I'm like, right, great. And so then we stopped thinking about that and played a couple of songs. And I didn't actually stop thinking about it, but I stopped focusing on it. Right. It went into the background. Right. And halfway through one of these songs, I'm like, oh, I know what the problem is. And so we finished playing the song. I came over to the computer. I went into my router. I added more addresses to the, the range that my router would hand out to devices. And suddenly everybody's like, hey, I'm online. And what I realized was, you know, it had been a year plus since any of these people had been here. I had added a ton of like, you know, 
Wi-Fi bulbs and things like that. And I had taken up all the addresses that I had reserved for devices on my network. And these guys, you know, were the straw that broke the camel's back. Right. So, but, you know, and so, so there is that technical lesson there. And if you've added a bunch of those things, maybe think about going in and updating your THCP reservations, but we're not really a nerdy show here. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, you if know, you know what THC re- <laughs> yeah, THCP right. reservations are, yeah. you're ahead of the game. You're ahead of the game. <laughs> but, but even still, like that idea of, Sometimes the best thing to do once you've sort of dug into a problem and realized what the problem or at least what the symptoms are. And this happens in business to me all the time. You know, you run into some issue and you try to, you know, come up with whatever your initial solution would be and you don't come up with one. Try and move on. Find something else to do that's going to distract you, you know. And honestly, I find certainly playing my drums is one of those things because it's sort of immersive. Uh, Driving becomes that sort of thing because you have to focus on it. Showering is one of those things. Even going for a walk, like any sort of any of those sort of immersive meditative things that I can do help me solve problems because they let the things sort of cogitate in the background and often that's where solutions come from for me. And so, um, so yeah, I, I, like that I share that, like, just don't forget we, all, and I say this to myself as much as to all of you, don't forget to, you know, to try and like, not let it go, but let it sort of simmer in the background a little bit. And sometimes those solutions come percolating up in a, in the most wonderful ways and often quite a bit faster than if I'm obsessively focused on it, because if I haven't figured out the solution in, you know, whatever the first, we'll call it the first 10 minutes. Now, some problems might take an hour, right? Or whatever. But if I haven't come up with the solution, if I'm focusing on it, I'm probably not going to come up with a solution, you know, because I'm, I'm too, it's the whole forest from the trees thing, right? I'm, I'm too deep right. in the, in the weeds. I got to get out of the weeds and, and get out of the weeds and then start thinking about it as though it's somebody else's problem, right? 10,000 foot view sometimes points you in a different direction. It's like your own I version like of it. business therapy. So there you go. I like it. It's, it's, it's true, man. Yeah. And maybe, maybe you need to write it down. Like, yes. okay, I got to come back and revisit this and uh, add it to your list. That's but, a great uh, idea. Right. Yeah. Letting it percolate around and, and coming at it from a different angle. Uh, it, it does work really well. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Hey, um, I, we, you, I, I say we, but it's, it's you that has, uh, you have a bunch of things to share more things to share about LinkedIn. Uh, and I definitely want to do that. The next thing that I want to do, if, uh, if you're okay with it, uh, Shannon is to talk about our sponsor for this episode. Yeah, I think it's great. Let's do it. All right. Our sponsor for today is custom comet at customcomet.com. They are a Portland, Oregon based company who makes custom merch and promotional products for your business. These things include all sorts of stuff, coasters, coffee sleeves, patches, pins, stickers, and air fresheners. These are the things that people love. I mean, people love everything there, but these air fresheners are awesome. They create custom shapes for every order. So the air freshener is actually shaped like your logo or artwork. They sent us some examples and it's true. It's amazing. They even sent us some small business show stickers, which is also amazing. Most companies allow you to only use like 10 or so stock shapes. If you've ever looked into this, like air fresheners are tough to do in the custom shapes. They've figured it out. They've got over 70 cents, 17 different string colors. So you can really make this thing look like your business and really represent you well. And those air fresheners use a three layer process. They have an absorbent cotton core that sucks up all the fragrance. And that's sandwiched between printing paper, which gives you this crisp, high quality art. So your logo look or whatever you want on there could be your face. Hey, no problem, right? It looks fantastic. So cool. They offer all kinds of retail packaging options if you want to sell them or otherwise you just do it your own way and, you know, hand them out to people, whatever you want to do. They've got super high quality materials and stellar customer service. This is the thing that sets them apart because they know that delivering a quality product and supporting it is the key. They provide free design help because they are the core of this company is a design team, graphic designers based here in the U S and so they can do everything to make sure your project looks great. One other thing to remember mention that you heard about custom comet 
on this show, on the Small Business Show, and they'll give you 5% off your first order. So, go, let Custom Comet help your brand create a unique and memorable promotional product. Visit CustomComet.com. Links, of course, are in the show notes. And our thanks to Custom Comet for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, tell me about LinkedIn. I need to know more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so... Uh, last episode, we we talked about the why. You know, we spent a lot of time going into why you should be on LinkedIn, uh, why your small business can benefit up there, uh, and a little bit about the methodology. But we had a really you know great response to that show, and I have some additional content. Uh, you wouldn't be surprised uh, about the how. Um, you know, uh, how to get up there, how to build your profile, how to, how to do things. So if uh, that's cool with you, I'd love to talk about that. Yeah. How to build my LinkedIn presence, please. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah man. Yes. Yeah. So what what you want to do is, you, you know, you want to build your, uh, or create a personal account and then you want to create a page for your business, right? So you need the Dave Hamilton, the Shannon Jean account. And then once you get that, your profile set up, you're going to create your account for your business and you will be the administrator for that account. If you've created a Facebook page or group, it's very similar to that. Sure. Um, so let's talk about your profile first. One of the things you want to do is use keywords in your profile that are related to your business, your industry, really important because people are going to be searching for those things and you want to come up uh, in those search results. So this and, might be the last place that keywords actually matter and help for search. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> I, I, that's right. And, and, and you'll get prompted when you're making those searches on LinkedIn that uh, they will prompt you to select certain uh, keywords and help with your search stuff. And it, and it definitely does work. Um, it's, you know, this is a professional site, so you want to have a, a good headshot. You know, if you don't have a professional headshot, have somebody take one for you, but have it look nice, right? Yeah. Uh, once you get your page set up, there's a few steps you can go, or, or your profile, to get a customized URL. And that's like linkedin.com slash in slash and your name. Uh, that way you can kind of standardize that easy for people to uh, find you. Um, the other thing you want to do on that profile page is there are sections in there where you can show your uh, content that your business and yourself, your work, things that you've done, things that your business has done. You can highlight those things up there. Um, and I would highly recommend you do it because people are going to look at your profile and a lot of people are going to look at there, try to come sell you things. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but okay. uh, you want to have, you know, good content, what you're working on, things you're involved in. If you're involved in any volunteer uh, work or community things, that's great to have up there as well. Um, I, I would just say you want your, your bio, there's a section up there. You want it to be, you know, it, it be professional, but it should be remarkable and memorable. I, I always say that. Um, think about things, get some advice, have somebody else help you maybe come up with some terms um, and make sure that they're going to, people going to remember who you are. Okay. Uh, and you and how have, long should that bio be? Like, like, are we, are we talking just like a, a quick paragraph or should a quick I? Paragraph. Okay. So not a paragraph, not a page. Got it. Yeah, okay. Paragraph. Yep. And now you can, one of the great things about, uh, LinkedIn that you can do, uh, you know, and I believe we talked about this in the last episode is, is create content on the platform, not just linking to things, but you could write an article, you could write a post about something you're involved in, uh, you know, that, that kind of would be related to your bio and what you're working on. And you'll, and that'll show up right on your profile page. Creating that content is, it, it's really powerful. Uh, and things you're interested in and, you know, you can, you can leave it right there on the platform. Um, really so, helpful. So to treating get LinkedIn thing. almost like a, a medium type of thing where yeah, you're yeah. posting a blog post, but, but not just linking to a blog post somewhere else. You're actually just posting it on LinkedIn. Interesting. You got it. Yeah. Yeah. And you could do both. I mean, you could of course. repurpose that content, have a little mini post up there on LinkedIn and link it to your longer blog post on your business website. Um, Is that and, considered, you may not know this answer, but I know that like Google doesn't like to see this exact same content in two different places. Like if I post it, if I, let's say I, I write a blog post that I'm super proud of and I want to put it on both small business show or business show.co and yep. macobserver.com Google. Like if you do that, you have to be very specific about which one is the canonical one and all this does, does like essentially repurposing content 
on or from LinkedIn, does that even count or does Google not really see it the same way? Do you know? That's a good question. I yeah. don't know. Okay. But I would suggest you could, uh, the article on LinkedIn is if, if you want to point people to somewhere else where the the uh, original information is, perhaps, you know, it's more of a summary, right? Sure. And you're not just going to cut and paste, but you've got a paragraph or two about, hey, we're working on this project or this new X or this new, you know, with this new customer, here's what we've learned. Here's, you know, what, what we're working on and then link to the, uh, to the rest of the content right from there. It looks like I'm doing, and, and this is like super quick Googling literally while we're recording this show, but it looks like it, there's, there's plenty of SEO advice for doing exactly this. Take your blog post, put it on LinkedIn. Doesn't seem like there's any uh, penalties from Google for that. So that's so, great. Yep. Yep. I'll, I'll yeah, put these I'll, links in if you want to research folks too. So yep. that's great. Uh, yeah. And, and I think that, you know, my take on it is, um, you want to be an expert in whatever you're involved in, right? You want to be credible. And this isn't something that I mean, you're going to set this up. Uh, and other than this content that you're going to create for the most part, this is going to stay up there. Sure. Uh, and so it's, it's good to, to kind of keep working on it. And uh, it, it, it really, you know, it's make, it can make you stand out in the business community and uh, it's, it's worth getting it, getting it right. Um there's a section on your profile page where people can endorse you for different skills. I don't know how valuable that is, but uh, I, one way if you want to get those endorsements is to go endorse other people for skills. I would only, you know, highly recommend you only endorse people that you know and that you know have those certain skills. There's, sec you know, everything from you know, like you're just talking about SEO, search engine stuff, marketing, Sure. you know, you can just select, click little buttons and on that person's profile, it'll say, oh, Dave Hamilton endorsed, you know, Shannon Jean for X, Y, and Z. Right. Um, you know, and is it, what, is it like etiquette wise, is it cool? Like if I endorse you, it, it, and obviously you and I know each other fairly well, but you know, if we were just sort of acquaintances, but close enough that I could honestly give an endorsement to you that's the key right yeah. like if i do that is it what's the etiquette like in me saying hey i sent you an endorsement if you if you feel you know if you feel like reciprocating i'd super you know i'd appreciate that like is that cool or not so cool i haven't had anyone ask me okay before to do that but i do see it uh regularly where if I go endorse someone, it comes up and it tells you, okay, so-and-so endorsed you for X, Y, and Z. And, you know, it, I would always go back and look and say, okay, well, what do they do that I know of? And, yeah. you know, kind of reciprocate and give them that endorsement. Okay. So let, 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 it be, let it be organic, but maybe yeah. six months down the road, if it hasn't been organic, you can maybe water the flowers a little bit. So, yeah. yeah. And, and I really don't know how much value it adds. It, it kind of lists down there, shows you those kinds of th things you've been endorsed for, but it's just one more thing. And no, it looks good. Like if I don't know you and I'm looking at your profile, it, most people don't have t many or even any endorsements on their LinkedIn pro profile. Right. So if I yep. see that you have even two or three, that. Th to me, that actually carries a lot of weight. Now, whether it, it matters for LinkedIn's, you know, SEO or whatever, I have no idea. But in terms of me just looking at your profile, th that means a lot. So, yeah, I, I would agree. And, it, and again, it's free. It's quick. It's just right. one thing that uh, a tool uh, you can use there. Um, so you have your your personal profile set up. It looks great. Um, when you want to set up your business page, it's you know, just like your website, what story are you trying to tell, right? What do you want to get across? Now, maybe your website is focused on consumers, but maybe your business page on LinkedIn, uh, maybe you want to find suppliers. Maybe that if, you, you know, you're in the, I don't know, the technology business and you want people to come across your business and say, hey, let's sell to these, uh, to this company. Sure. Maybe it needs to say, you know, have a different message. So you need to think about that. What, what are we trying to achieve here? You know, one of the folks we had on the show um, a while back that I really was impressed with the way they managed their LinkedIn presence was uh, Gary Von Meyer Meir from uh, Tech Defenders. Yeah. Uh, if, if you recall, and, and he made a comment that I was uh, really impressed with this, their focus on their business page on LinkedIn and all the activities they post was for employees to look and say, wow, I really want to go work there. 
they were look, using it to get quality talent to come, you know, work for their business, which I thought was great. And they do, they post all kinds of stuff about what's going on in their business events they're holding for their employees, uh, you know, who won the employee of the month, all these kinds of things. Um, and, uh, I think it works really well. I like that. Yeah, no, it, it it's smart, man. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. And, and then, uh, you know, you want to think about who's going to manage that page. You just don't want to stick it up there. Just like your, your personal page. If you're trying to use LinkedIn as a tool, it needs to be used. You're going to create content, whether you're going to repurpose some of that blog post, whether you're going to have, you know, uh, images and video posted, what's going on at your business, at your facility. Uh, you know, are you going to do it? Are you going to have an employee? Somebody needs to be an admin that's going to manage that for you. Uh, and I think it's important that you keep up on it. it. Makes it more useful. Yeah, no, you definitely need somebody like, and it could be you, but if it's going to be you schedule it in your calendar, like, okay, you know, even just once a week, I'm going to go and manage the profile and do a thing and update it and maybe even schedule yep. some things like that, that in fact, that's probably the most efficient way to do it is exactly that. But if you just leave it alone, then it, it will, it will stagnate and that will be obvious. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of the last things I want to talk about is uh, on LinkedIn is engagement. You know, to be successful, you, you need to put some time in it. And, you know, engagement can be as simple as when you're just getting started out by liking and commenting on other people's posts, right? You're going to see in your feed, we talked about the feed, you know, last week, Dave, about whether it's useful or not. Yeah. Here's how I find it useful. If you want to connect with people, in your industry, as a potential customer, as a supplier, comment and like on things there, on activity they're posting. I do a lot with eBay, and I'm connected with a ton of eBay people there. And I always, you know, oh, what's going on with this? And I make gay congratulations. They post about job things, you know, in their career. Um, it's, it, it, it's really effective, especially if you want to... Uh, get closer to that person and, and perhaps have some, you know, business relationship with them in the future. Um, I always and, say that a like on any social media, you know, it doesn't matter if it's LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, or whatever, it costs you nothing. And it really can buy so much because think about it when you see, Oh, that person liked this post. I mean, it doesn't tell you they, you know, there's, there's, I mean, Facebook accepted and LinkedIn has their own, like, varying types of, of likes. Right. But it, it's not telling you, Oh, this person stopped for an hour and like told everyone they knew about what you did. It just means that they click the button, right? Like it's, yeah. it's, it's a very minimum level of interaction. And yet it does like it, it means something when I see somebody, Oh, that person liked this post. Oh, that's good. They're paying attention to me. They saw what I did. We all like recognition, right? And yep, that's what that's this right. is. It's just a tiny little bit of recognition that means so much more to the person receiving it often than it does to the person giving it in this particular regard. Because clicking, clicking like takes zero time, right? It's just like click, you, if you bothered to read what they were saying or even if you didn't, you click like, you move on, you click like, you move on. I've found, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but um, but on uh, like on Facebook, if I have people commenting on a post – I like everything that I've read. I treat it as my marked as read indicator yeah, for absolutely. myself. Now, how other people interpret it is totally up to them. And they might think, oh, Dave liked my comment. Well, I may have. Uh, I don't know. I just checked it because that way I know I've read it and I don't have to think about which ones are new to me because Facebook won't tell me that. And yeah. uh, and, it, you know, people like it. So, yeah, that that's one piece of simple actionable advice. It's just like everything. It costs you nothing. Yeah. And I, and I, one of the things too on LinkedIn is the share button is, is going to get super quick. And if you're l l reading about things in your, in the newsfeed and someone, you know, or an article you agree with, or you like, or you think, well, that's pretty relevant. You can click that share button. It'll share it on your feed. I mean, it just takes a second and you know, it's probably even one step above a like or something like that. But yeah. all these things, every time you do this, the person you're interacting or engaging with is going to see your name on their notifications. It's going to say Dave Hamilton liked your po liked your post. Dave Hamilton shared your post. Dave, you know, just like other social uh, yeah. you know platforms. But 
that you're just going to build up uh, a little more credibility. Yeah, when you and run into you, that person at a conference, they feel like they know you better. Exactly, exactly. We also, I mean, I use it to find guests to come on the Small Business Show. So I, I'm, you know, we've had some great uh, outdoors. I mean, I'm a real outdoor person, fishing, hunting, that kind of thing. And so I go up there and find people in those industries and I start, you know, oh, can I connect? If I can't connect, some people that have millions of, of connections or thousands of connections, you may just be able to follow them, but then their, their content's going to show up in your feed. You'd use that to engage with them and start building a relationship. And we've had some great guests on the show that I never would have had the opportunity to meet had it not been for LinkedIn. It's awesome. I, I, yeah. I will add one more thing. Make most of your comments about the person or the company or whatever the topic is that's, that's been posted make as few of them as possible yourself. about you. <laughs> yeah. That's I see right. so many people out there yes. that are, you know, if I, if I say, Oh, you know, I did this, this thing, you know, somebody will say, Oh, I did a different thing. It's like, okay, like, like that's great. And I, it doesn't bother me, but it like, I know what my approach is and it's like, yeah, but what you could have done to like curry better favor is to say, yes. wow, that's amazing that you did that thing and then yes. walk away. Because I might come and reply like, hey, thanks for saying that. Then you can come back and say, you know, now it, it, you don't you don't say it this way. But now that we're conversing asynchronously, as it might be, then like, oh, you know, I did a similar thing. But you didn't lead with make it all about me. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, like, that's important. It, it again. It and, and this is true of like in-person conversation, too. But on social media, it's way easier, I see, for people to just be like, hey, think about me. And it's like, no, yeah. the way to get me to think about you is to you to talk about me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I love it. Right. I, love I mean, it. it's just yeah. how it's how we work as humans. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, and the last thing with LinkedIn is I'll leave you with this is I, I get approached by people just trying to sell stuff to me all the time. The minute they connect, Hey, this is a service I'm offering. This is a product I'm selling. It, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Uh, what you need to think about is it, all these background things that we've talked about the last couple episodes, but also fundamentally think about adding value. The biggest impact you will have and, and you will find success will be when you can add value to someone else first right? Whether that's a like, a share, a comment, uh, a tip, uh, you know, whatever, a technique. Oh, I used your technique and did this and I tweaked it a little bit this way. Um, that is great. And that helps you build relationships, build, build that relationship first. And then perhaps down the road, there will be some, you know, uh, added value that they can bring back to you, whether right. it you know helps you personally or your business. But think about what value you can add to them. That's truly, I think, the secret of where you will find success on LinkedIn. And uh, I think so many people just don't get it. Mm -hmm. um, but but if you do that using some of these techniques that we've shared here in uh, these last couple episodes, I think you'll find that it's a really useful uh, platform for you, for your employees, for your partners, and for people to connect on. And I'd love to hear how you're using it uh, or what I got wrong or what I missed. Feedback at businessshow.co is where you let us know. Absolutely. And if you can't think about at any value specifically to add, ask the person a question about themselves. Like that's a great place to start because the people showing interest. There you go. Right. Like that's that's actually valuable. Yeah, I agree, it man. It works. Thanks, man. This is this is yeah. great. Very enlightening. I like it. I like it. I've I've yes. Good stuff. Thank you. It works. It really does work. It's like I said, it's the, the most ignored resource, I think, uh, for small businesses is LinkedIn. And with just a little bit of effort, you'll find some value in it for yourself and for your business. Yeah, I, I need to make it part of my daily routine. I tried again last week and I did it for like two days and then I, I, I got I got burned out on it again. So I, I just got to I got to I got to get into the habit of it. So. I got to put it on yep. my to-do list so that I can put it on my to-did list. There you go. That's the key. <laughs> you got it. Thanks so much for listening, folks. Send in your ideas to us. Feedback at businessshow.co. We would love to hear from you. All the links that we mentioned in the episode, I've put in the show notes for you at businessshow.co. You can see them all right there. Uh, and if, again, if you have anything to add, let us know. We'll add it to the, the show notes for you, too, so that everybody can benefit from this. 
Thanks so much. Check out our sponsor, customcomet.com. Make sure to mention Small Business Show for 5% off. And uh, have a good one out there. Keep, uh, keep living that charmed life, will you?